Uh, moving on to Bahrain, much smaller place. Uh, Bahrain has been in ferment uh, uh, since 2009, although the roots of political uh, dissent go back uh, much further. Bahrain, unlike Syria, is, is a pro-American kingdom. Uh, President Bush uh, had a nice visit with, with King Hamad of Bahrain. The, uh, the royal family in Bahrain goes, has deep roots in the country. The Al Khalifa clan conquered Bahrain in 1783. So it's about as old as the United States. But when they conquered Bahrain, they conquered a mostly Shiite population. Shiite population of both Arab and, and Persian ancestry. Now, the ethnic composition or the national ancestry of Bahrain's population is diverse. All right, um, some of the Shiites are of Arab ancestry, some of Persian ancestry. Uh, their political dispositions are diverse. Some follow Iranian clerics, some follow Iraqi clerics. Um, so you to depict Bahraini politics as Sunni versus Shiite is an oversimplification. But it is true that, in general, power and wealth is concentrated in the hands of the Sunni dynasty and the Sunni population, and that uh, places such as uh, Pearl Island, this uh, luxury uh, tourism, commercial, and residential development, uh, benefits the uh, the Sunni allies of, of the rulers, and the, um, the Shiites live in miserable conditions in small towns and villages. So uh, there is a sectarian facet of, of Bahraini politics, which is undeniable. Now, politics, since uh, Bahrain became independent in 1971, has not centered so much on a struggle between these two religious communities as it has on a struggle over whether or not the country will be governed according to the constitution that was promulgated in 1973, a constitution that provides for an elected uh, parliament in a constitutional monarchy. Uh, unfortunately, since 1973, uh, in most years, the uh, constitution has been suspended. Uh, when it's enacted, elections have very frequently been rigged. Uh, opposition leaders and their organizations have faced harassment. Their newspapers and organs have uh, been uh, censored. And so there has been a real struggle for uh, political participation, representative government in Bahrain for uh, nearly 40 years since the promulgation of the Constitution in 1973. This is not a brand new uh, Arab Spring phenomenon in, in, in Bahrain. The, uh, the manifestation of the Arab Spring in Bahrain was this uh, famous site in, in downtown Manama, the, the capital of Bahrain, uh, called Pearl Square. It became a, a tent city, and it became the heart of a popular protest movement. All right? The protest movement itself split uh, between reformers who were essentially calling for implementation and upgrading of uh, parliamentary government, and revolutionaries who uh, had lost all trust that the monarchy was capable of abiding by democratic rules and were calling for the overthrow of the monarchy. The, um, you had this kind of artistic representation uh, of this sort of whole art of the Arab protest, which is, has its own uh, fascinating track record uh, from Tunisia to Arabia. This is uh, a painted map bloodstained map of Bahrain uh, with the uh, caption in the lower left, uh, Steadfast Bahrain. Uh, there's a very popular movement. Uh, there's this uh, great cartoon, I thought, uh, depicting the role of Facebook in, in the Arab Spring. That's King Hamad uh, along with Mubarak and Gaddafi, who were still around at the time the cartoon was, was devised. Um, the, uh, the Arab Spring in Bahrain <clears throat> was viewed as a real threat by its neighbor across the water in Saudi Arabia. And it was a threat to the, the Saudis. It was perceived by a threat uh, in two respects. First of all, um, the Saudi government looks at 
Bahrain through a regional sectarian lens and sees any progress towards democracy in Bahrain as a gain for Iran, because a gain for democracy in Bahrain would be, uh, from Riyadh's eyes, a Shiite gain, and a Shiite gain is an Iranian gain. So the Saudis were uh, quite prepared to, to intervene. Uh, they also did not want to see democracy on their doorstep. They didn't want to see democracy as a uh, viable model because they don't want to see democracy in their own country. So uh, in the middle of March uh, last year, the Saudis crossed the causeway into Bahrain to give the monarchy their assistance in cracking down on the, uh, the protest movement. And March 18th, the uh, <clears throat> Bahrain government forces uh, dismantled Pearl Square uh, arrested hundreds of people, threw them in jail, and, and put down this, this rebellion. Now, it was a very brutal um, action to put down this rebellion. Uh, it was investigated by uh, an international commission that came out with a report last November uh, that uh, pointed out instances of, of brutality, uh, torture, arbitrary arrest, and arbitrary detention. And... Um, the uh, response to that has been a proposal by the king in, um, in January, earlier this month, for constitutional reforms to uh, bolster the power of the elected cabinet. Unfortunately, the, the crackdown and continuing repression of very frequent protest uh, <coughs> occurrences in Shiite villages and towns has created so much ill will and mistrust that even the, the legal moderate opposition is not very willing to accept uh, such gestures from, from the ruler, who, again, is afraid that protest representation represents Iranian meddling in Bahraini affairs. Uh, the uh, Bahraini government insisted to the United States that the protest movement was orchestrated in Iran. Uh, one of the findings of this international uh, commission uh, that uh, delivered its report last November was that there was absolutely no evidence of any Iranian intervention in Bahrain, something that the Bahraini government still uh, rejects. 